I've had a lot of gifts over the years. This guy's one of them. This is my son, Aaron. For all you single ladies, he's married. <laughs> <laughs> he's got nice pipes. But uh, two might be the reason I'm up here right now. They came during the darkest part of my life. This is a gift from my brother, musical instruments, and he gave it to me and said, Ted, you got the music in you. Now you're going to find out right away, Ashley, that I'm not that musically talented. That's part of the reason he's up here. So what was he saying by that? The other gift that I got was a chapter in a book. And a friend turned over that chapter and she said, it was like it was written about you. You've experienced a lot of pain in your life and you've shared it and you've cared for it. And I'm thinking, what do you mean sharing and caring for pain? See, I like making mixes. I got a happy mix is kind of the classic mix. I got a mix for everything. I got a bonfire mix. I got a snowboarding mix. I got a wedding mix. I got a mix for everything. But almost overnight, I went from making happy mi mixes to a soundtrack I call Blue Christmas. Now, it's a soundtrack, not a mix. There's a difference. A mix is just happy energy music. A soundtrack tells a story. It's a grouping of songs. And I would insert some words in there to help lay out a whole story. So my mom had just died, and I was 37 years old, and for the first time, I knew what it felt like to be blue at Christmas. But that's not the mix I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about Brother Down. And although I didn't know it at the time, Brother Down started coming together just a few days after that blue Christmas. My dad had gathered the family together and said, I have cancer, and I'm going to die and I'd like you to release me. And we did, and I said, Dad, I've got to go on vacation, but as soon as I get back, we're going to go to the mountains, we're going to go on a road trip, see your buddies, check out some job sites. So Carrie, my wife, and I went on vacation, and uh, I got a phone call a couple of days in, and my sister says, you should get home now, because Dad is fading fast. And I'm like, what? I just left him, he was doing great. So my wife, Carrie, she went down to the lobby to make a phone call to her parents. Her parents were looking after our two boys, Sam and Aaron. This is Aaron. One word, year and a half apart. And she came back from making that phone call, and she was weeping uncontrollably. And I'm thinking, Carrie, it's going to be okay. We've done this before. And she said, no. The paramedics are in the basement right now. I think Sammy's dead. Take a deep breath and I get real high and I scream from the top of my lungs What's going on? I still get introduced as the guy whose dad and son died on the same day. So we're on an island and all you want to do is get home. You just hand over the credit card. Get me on a plane. You don't even look out the window. People actually got off plane so we could get on a plane to get on home. And you can't control your thoughts. I actually prayed that Sam was dead rather than hooked up to some artificial life. I didn't even think of my dad. And I had no idea that people were already jumping onto planes. They had stopped everything they had going on. You kind of hope that they're going to be there at the funeral. You don't expect them to meet you at the airport. Sharing and caring for pain. All I want is your love. 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 Everybody knows 13-year-olds aren't supposed to die. The paramedics were probably surprised when they ripped open his shirt and they saw all the scars on his chest. They started wailing on him. Sammy had lots of scars. He was born with a heart defect. And the doctor said, we need you to give us your beautiful baby. 
we're going to take his heart and we're going to fix it. But these young lungs, we're never sure if they're going to get off the machine. And that's when you notice for the first time the empty crib beside his. So when you finally land, you walk down the forever hall at the hospital, because that's where he is. And the door opens at the end. And there's a body and a white sheet. We noticed his whiskers for the first time. Wake up! Wake up, dead man! MLK was on one of the first mixes that we made when Sam was first born. He spent two months in that hospital. The nurses said at the time, that brought a different kind of healing. But there was no healing tonight. Sleep, sleep tonight, and may your dreams be realized. If the thunder cloud passes rain, so let it rain, rain down on him. Heaven by Lost Lonely Boys. We needed to tell people that it's not all bad. It's mostly good, actually. It's just that the bad can, well, it's just so dark. Sammy had a blast the night before he died. He was hanging around with his best buddies. They were roller skating. They were wearing these 27 shirts. And on the back of this shirt, maybe I'll show it to you later on, 27 crazy things that they had done. It was about pushing limits, scaring yourself a little bit, maybe learning something about yourself in the pro process. It was good, clean fun, even though the police actually got involved on occasion. It's kind of like, what the heck are you doing with this sofa in the elevator at the Forks? <laughs> I don't know. We want to get it to the top and sing hallelujah. So uh, heaven's no comfort, though, even if you believe in one. So we need to do a road trip after the funeral. Maybe you've seen the video. We need to go hug a few people. We hooked up with the usual snowboard crew. It was a beautiful day, powder day, a bit of heaven on earth. But we all missed that yellow jacket whipping by. Nobody said it was easy. No, it's such a shame for us to part. Nobody said it was easy. No one ever said it would be this hard. Oh, take me back to the star. I remember yelling at Sam, ride your bike faster. He'd look at me, Dad, you have no idea where I've been. He's right, I forgot. I thought the heart was fixed. My mom said, some things just don't get fixed like that. She's right, we all got scars. So the doctors, when he was first born, said, we need, you need to give us your child back. And Sam's middle name means gift. And so he did. But it's almost like there's a bigger ask. Are you prepared to lose your child forever? Well, who can answer that? But you have to, because the rewind button is broke. Nobody said it was easy. 
It's such a shame for us to part. Nobody said it was easy. No one ever said it would be this hard. Oh, take me back to the star. I got stuck sometimes, and stuck can sound so beautiful, right? How long to sing this song? How long to sing this song? How long? How long? How long? How long to sing this song? So how do you get unstuck? Is it DNA? Is it the genes? Or is it crazy by a seal? One of my favorite songs. You're never going to survive unless you get a little crazy. And then the snowboarder drops in, and he starts doing these beautiful sweeping turns on powder. And then he tumbles and tumbles and tumbles at the bottom. But his buddies are down there. They're waiting for him because they know never ride alone. And I think my family knows that, and my friends do as well. It was their idea to create this first year anniversary of Sam's death. The kids went first, dipped their hands in blue. It's the base. And if you look, you'll see lots of little clues in there. A warm cookie or a football, big dipper at the, to at the top. How can so much pain turn into something so beautiful? Even the sun is crying. And we chose Walk On as the last song in the funeral. I'm not sure if we sent it as a signal to Sam. See you when we get home, Sam. Or if it was for us to keep walking. Or if it was for everybody in the congregation. You know that people stand at the end of a funeral. It's like a big group hug. We are there with you. And they still are. Somebody wanted to paint this for us, barely knew them, an Ethiopian artist. And if anything, our journey is kind of like going from dark to light. It's intense. It's like watching the heart monitor. You never quite know where you're going, but your heart's thumping. And that bright white dot in the middle, that's important. That's your inner soundtrack. You have to find it. And when you find it, you got to share it because that is what helps everybody. It helps all people. It helps you. So I asked my uh, family, I said, hey, we're thinking about adopting. What do you think about that? And my sister Bev said it best. She said, you guys got so much love to give. Bazin Messi, born in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. And actually this song, Where the Streets Have No Name, is about a place called Addis Ababa, written on a flight home. And my brother said, you should move into the neighborhood. Sounds good. Lots of nieces and nephews hanging around, including the oldest one. Angela Cassie, where are you? Joy, actually, is her middle name. That's important to know her middle name is Joy, actually. And for the first time in eight years, we put Joy on the Christmas card. It took us eight years, but we still sign it, plus one. And we have a golf tournament. We raised some funds for an award in Sam's name. And it's not about golf, because we're a bunch of hackers, actually. We raised some money. We give it to kids who have overcome, overcome cancer, whose parents have died, or they're immigrants. Sammy actually won student of the month, the, the month he died. And we also give some money to Haiti, because we've got some connections there, you know. And then the family said, you know what? Let's build some habitat houses together. So they flew in from all over North America. It was a blast. We built two houses in a day. And the backyard is big. We started moving the party into the front yard so people walking by can come around and hang around and join in the party. I want to run. I want to hide. I want to tear down these walls that hold me inside. 
I wanna reach out and touch the flame where the streets have no name. Oh, I wanna feel sunlight on my face. Feel that dust cloud disappear without a trace. I wanna dance, dance, dance in the pouring rain where the streets have no name. Oh, where the streets have no name. Where the streets have no name. Still building, then burning down love. Burning down love And when I go there I go there with you It's all I can do So as you can tell, I like you too a little bit. <laughs> Maybe you do too. Um, and I needed to meet the band, actually. I needed to meet this guy. And you can see he's actually holding a yellow shirt up there waited all day in line. And I've never been a groupie before, but I was a groupie for a day. And so this guy and me, we waited all day in line. And you figure that they're gonna come up and they're just gonna sign and just keep going. We started talking and everybody around us started listening. It got quiet. And he asked some questions. What's his name? What happened? And he wrote down, Sammy lives forever. And then he asked this guy, what's Sam's favorite song? Vertigo. Vertigo, Edge came, came by and said, this one's for Sammy. It was cool. So that night we went to the concert and they played Vertigo twice. They played it at the beginning and at the end, the reviewer says, I had to look it up actually. The reviewer says, the band was getting ready to play 40. They had already swapped instruments and Bono yelled out, we're playing Vertigo again. Swapping instruments. Sharing and caring for pain, living bravely and intensely, and sharing the soundtracks that we get through. You never know who might sing along. There's a rhythm and rush these days Where the lights don't move and the colors don't fade Leaves you empty with nothing but dreams In a world gone shallow, in a world gone mean Sometimes there's things a man cannot know The gears won't turn and the leaves won't grow 